Welcome to the Mostly Mike Show. Today I'm going to assemble and review the Algalaser DIY Kit Mark II 10 Watt Diode Laser Engraver, which incidentally I didn't pay for. The kind folks at Algalaser had sent me this laser in exchange for making this review video. Algalaser had also sent me the honeycomb table which protects your workbench as well as an air assist pump, which I was led to believe maximizes efficiency by way of facilitating an air stream blowing away smoke particles and debris, therefore making the laser cut at optimum speeds while keeping the lens clean. I will also disclose that I have never used a laser engraver before, nor do I have a clue on how to use the Lightburn software associated. But this is all going to change as I spend every waking hour learning this from my beloved viewers. There's a ton of things to cover on the Algalaser, so I'm not going to spend a long time describing everything in the box and showing how the Algalaser is assembled. The instructions are pretty decent in the user manual, which I kind of slashed the cover of while cutting the box open. It turns out that the reason I can't have nice things is me. Oops. Good thing I only got the cover on it. After assembling the laser engraver, I didn't bother to install the air assist just yet, because I got a little antsy and wanted to make my first thing. But I did put the honeycomb table down because I kind of like the desk underneath and don't want it, you know, vaporized. The honeycomb table is supposed to prevent that in case you didn't. If you suffer from OCD like me and get annoyed by the round part number stickers on the frame, these stickers are murder. Use a heat gun if you have one to soften them, then use your favorite fingernail to get them off. Even with a heat gun, they're a pain. They're almost impossible to remove otherwise. Wow. Guess they don't want them to come off. Without having a clue on how to run one of these lasers, I looked quickly at the manual and saw that it was important to focus the laser on whatever you're going to engrave or cut using this. They have this little top hat monopoly piece looking thing. And you use that to gauge the gap between this red cover and your actual workpiece. So it's set up right now, but if that was off, you just loosen the two thumb screws, you lift your laser until you accomplish that gap, and then you tighten the thumb screws up and you're ready to go. After that, I started pressing buttons, you know, because it's what you do. No, that's not what you do. On that, let's have a few words about safety. While these lasers don't look like much, they can really mess you up or cause blindness. I'm pretty sure that if this thing wanted to remove my gallbladder that it could do it in a matter of seconds. Be sure that if you don't look at anything else in the manual that you take the time to read the safety precautions and wear your safety glasses. And let me make mention that these engravers make a fair amount of smoke as well as presumably noxious fumes when they operate, depending upon what your engraving medium is. If you don't have an area that is permitted to get super smoky and not set off the fire alarm, Algalaser makes an enclosure with an exhaust fan and a hose to take the smoke outside where it belongs, possibly keeping you out of divorce court. I'll include the Amazon link for this stuff in the description, which I'll mention. These videos are a ton of work to produce, and if you want to help me improve future content, clicking these links before you buy anything on Amazon is a good way to do it for free with small commissions that I earn even from the things you were going to buy anyway. Please pause the video and click the thumbs up while I get ready to test this thing. The Algalaser has its own little touch screen which has a few preloaded cutout and engraving programs which I just clicked around and tried some different ones until I got something to work. So here we have the Algalaser air assist pump. It's just a piston pump and it has like rubber shock feet on it so it doesn't resonate through the table because these things can generate some noise if they don't have that. There's a pendant control with variable speed. I choose full speed when I use this thing and I believe that you probably can't really have too much air. Um, you let me know in the comments if you think otherwise. but. It connects to the head with shark bites and there's uh, about a six foot or so roll of the, this quarter inch stuff that's a little bit more rigid so you can get it up to the top of your laser or wherever it needs so that this stuff can move as the laser's, you know, traversing across. I would recommend practicing on some thin cardboard like cereal boxes or beer cartons until you learn how things work. Hooking the Alga laser up to a computer makes life much easier. So I gathered up some stuff to throw together a Windows 7 system as well as a Wi-Fi booster. 
I downloaded the 30 day trial to light burn which is pretty much the go to app for any laser, 3D printer or router. Without getting too far in the weeds with the software end of things, there's a couple nuggets of information that are good to know. The frame button is important for seeing where the laser is going to cut to center your design on whatever you're engraving. In your device settings, you can enable the laser to be turned on very weak so you can see where it's going to cut to further aid in centering. I had some frustration getting the laser to talk to the PC, which I solved in the light burn window titled Laser. There's a drop down menu for devices where you can select the COM port that the included USB connector cable was plugged into. It really pays to get yourself a notebook dedicated to this machine and write down these fixes in your own words so that you can reference it if it happens again. So when anything happens that you don't want to happen on here, or something's getting cut that shouldn't be cut, mash this red emergency stop button down and you're gonna get a screen here you know, saying that the button's been pressed. Well, of course you know it's been pressed because you're the guy that pressed it. Just give it a quarter turn and it'll release. On the main screen, if you hit the control button, go to motion, you can jog the laser. You can see the laser will move wherever you want it to go to position it to where you want to center yourself on your work. You have this set of keys. If you want to lock this laser up, you know, so your kids can't get in it or whatever, uh, there is a key switch and it shuts the unit off and you can hide these keys and the unit is safe. It actually shuts everything down. And to start it back up, you just turn the key and wait for the glow plugs. Hit the start button. I was wondering what this thing was in the little box, and it turns out that that's actually a, an extra lens. Lenses need replaced periodically. I unplugged the laser, and I'm going to try to remove this little air shroud over the lens, which they give you an included Allen wrench to do so. This was actually loose. I don't know if it's supposed to be loose like that or not. You can see. This lens has a little bit of soot on it. I don't know if you can see that. I don't think that's what a new one looks like. No, you can even see through this, through the plastic box. It's uh, it's in like a protective coating, but you can see that that is way different from that. I'm gonna take a cotton swab, and maybe some alcohol, because they don't list anything in the book showing like how to care for that lens, but I think that lens might be able to be salvaged. So, we're gonna try that. So I have a little bit of sprayway glass cleaner and I'm just touching on the lens. I'm finding that most of what was on it is off. Now, I'm not even gonna try cleaning the inside of it because the inside actually is pretty sealed up tight. And that looks a million times better. And we'll find out shortly if it actually can be done or not because, I mean, I'm sure the laser will let us know in its own gentle little way that, hey, you can't clean this lens. Let me just screw it back on. I've been at a debate on how deep of a dive you all want me to get into showing the hows of this machine and concluded that most of you probably just want to see the darn thing run. So I'm just going to be quiet and show the different categories of materials, some with the time-lapse Delga laser in action, some without. So sit back and enjoy while I play some sick beats and show the Algalazer's fruits of its labor. Then after that, I'll give you my final thoughts on the Algalazer. Here we go!
as far as the features, this thing's feature packed for the price. I never in my life thought you could buy a laser in a three or four hundred dollar range that has these kind of features and does that nice of work. If I could change anything about this, and maybe they do make something for it, maybe you could tell me in the comments something that that they might make for this to eliminate, like, see how this stuff kind of just swings along. And it hasn't messed up any projects, but I just thought that there, you know, that maybe the cables could be more flexible and they could be on some kind of like a chain link tray that moves with the laser, but maybe this is the way to go. I even thought about like a gantry type uh, mechanism that would hold everything up, you know, but um, aside from that, I, I have zero complaints about this machine. You know, it's a learning curve to learn how to use the software and how to get everything to connect up. And it's quirky to hook up to a computer and it loses connections sometimes, but that's probably a user error, I'm guessing. Uh, I don't think it has to do with the Elga laser itself. I think it's more the PC that I'm connected to. The creative mind knows no limits when it comes to using the Elga laser DIY kit mark II. I have just scraped the surface on the possibilities of what the Elga laser can be used on. I hope that you got a few laughs and learned a little about laser engraving and cutting. Please like, share, and consider subscribing if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.